Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's my enormous pleasure and privilege to welcome you to the University of Manchester and the splendid surroundings of the Whitworth Hall for today's graduation ceremony. In particular, I extend a very warm welcome to our graduates, whose magnificent achievements and hard work we are here today to celebrate. I'm also delighted to see so many friends, family, and supporters here. Some of you I know who have traveled very large distances to get here. The university has also managed to give you a dollop of rain to give you something of a true Manchester experience, so welcome all. Your help and support of our graduates, more seriously, is a, has been a very important part of their success, and I'm sure in due course that they will congratulate you. Just like their tutors and members of staff in their school, you can be extremely proud of what our graduates have achieved. For those of you who are graduating today, when you decided to study at the University of Manchester, you chose to make a significant and major investment in your future, an investment that I hoped began to pay dividends as soon as you arrived. During the course of your studies, you will have gained the skills and knowledge to help you succeed in future years. Sir Joseph Whitworth, for whom the hall that we are sitting in was named after, was a man who knew the benefits of scientific precision. The techniques he developed for the mass production of mechanical instruments were well ahead of his time, but I have no doubt that he would have been awestruck by the precision and accuracy of today's physicists. Whitworth is also a strong believer in the value of education, and he backed the formation of the Mechanics Institute in 1824, the forerunner of a university in Manchester. Although many of you graduating today may be glad to see the back of assignments, and possibly having to get out of bed for a nine o'clock Monday lecture. The planning and research and writing skills that you deployed and nurtured will be of great value in the world of work and perhaps even for further study. The way in which you've balanced the, your commitment to academic life with other interests and the many competing distractions of the great city of Manchester will help you find a work-life balance as your career unfolds. And of course, we must not forget the strong and supportive friendships and relationships that you have forged here, which I hope will sustain for many years to come. Put simply, your achievement in completing your degree cannot be underestimated for its value and the strong platform it gives you to build on your career and its goals. Manchester is already one of the finest universities in Europe, but we are determined for it to become one of the best in the world. Our ambitious plan is to lift Manchester into the first rank of virtuosity in higher learning. At the very core of this is a major investment in buildings, infrastructure and facilities, and a commitment to the highest standards in research and scholarship. But it isn't bricks, mortar, wires, technology, equipment and pieces of paper, not even the pieces of paper you're about to receive, that make a university great and successful. It's people, it's the staff and the students of the institution. That's what really counts. During your studies, you will have all in your own way enriched and shaped and molded the university to the tremendous benefit of those who will follow in your footsteps. By reflecting on your experiences and telling us how we can make them even better, you have given us the blueprint to achieve our bold ambitions to be among the best in the world. The university is changing and will continue to change for the better because of you. So today is as much about honoring you for this valuable contribution as it is for the success in your academic studies. Obtaining your degree is an important milestone and you, of course, should celebrate this success. But it is the beginning of your journey and not the end. And hopefully your association with Manchester and the university will continue. The return on your investment continues well beyond today's pomp and ceremony. There are, of course, many ways for you to stay in touch with each other but I also encourage you to stay in touch with the Alumni Association so that you can help other students who follow you and also help the university mold its future. As alumni, you can help students in so many ways, as ambassadors for the university, in student placements and employment, and in the direct development of the university, which is vital for its future. So we sincerely hope today will not be your last contact with the university, and please remember that our doors will always be open to you. Thank you. Associate Vice President, graduates, their family and friends, today is very special for the graduates and also for the staff in the School of Physics and Astronomy. 
we are celebrating the achievement of our graduates in this room for all their hard work since they joined the university. You're joining a long list of outstanding graduates and the staff in the school know that you will continue to bring much distinction to the school and university using the skills and knowledge you've gained here. The school has a very distinguished history going back more than a century. Last year was the centennial year of the discovery by Ernest Rutherford here in Manchester of the atomic nucleus. Experimentally, he found the nucleus of the gold atom. This result was a key event in the revolution in physics at the start of last century, uh, and Rutherford was the second, what we call, Langworthy professor. The first Langworthy professor was Arthur Schuster, who fought hard for and opened the first modern physics laboratory in this country, in Manchester, in 1900. Our current Langworthy professor is Professor Geim. You should all know that Professors Geim and Novoselov were awarded the 2010 Nobel Prize in Physics for their groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material graphene. They're both still hard at work with their postdocs and students in the Schuster Building, a few hundred meters from this hall. The government recently put 50 million pounds of funding into this work, and over the next two years, the National Graphene Institute will be built on this campus. So come back and have a look. So what links these various professors? To be a world-class experimental scientist, one has to be imaginative, very hardworking, inventive, and patient, knowing that no matter what clever ideas one may have, nature has the final word on the truth that your experiment will reveal. To quote Richard Feynman, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is, it doesn't matter how smart you are, if it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. It's very simple. This brings us to the exciting events of the 4th of July this year, nothing to do with the Americans. In 1964, a theoretical physicist called Peter Higgs wrote a paper proposing a new elementary particle which was subsequently named after him as the Higgs boson. So in the popular press, this is called the God particle, okay? This triggered a global effort to confirm its existence. As a result, over the next 48 years, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, together with the Atlas and CMS experiments, were conceived, designed, built, installed, commissioned, and operated. A similar effort occurred in the USA at the D0 and CDF experiments operating at Fermilab's Tevatron. This all required a massive global effort by thousands of engineers, computer scientists, and physicists. Uh, it's been likened to the equivalent of landing a man on the moon. The Higgs boson is a crucial piece of the standard model in particle physics, and its discovery would be evidence of something called the Higgs field, which provides a mechanism to give mass to some of the fundamental particles from which this universe is built. Manchester physicists, postdocs, students, engineers, and technical staff contributed a significant amount to all this effort in terms of detectors, theory, accelerator physics, grid computing, physics analysis, and leadership of many activities, including the D0 experiment at Fermilab. Some of you, no doubt, did uh, your MPhys project uh, on some of these things. On Monday the 2nd of July, just, just a week or so ago, the D0 and CDF experiments at Fermilab in the USA showed updated results for their Higgs search in a channel for which they're still competitive. They announced a 2.9 sigma effect. Sadly, not enough to claim a discovery. On the 4th of July, in a seminar at CERN, CMS announced an overall 4.9 sigma signal, sig signal. Atlas also announced a five sigma signal. Both agreed that the particle has a mass of around 125 GeV over C squared. You will note that I carefully used the units correctly. Okay. Amusingly, this particle has a mass about one and a half times that of the nuclei in Rutherford's gold Oil. That's an interesting fact for you. The Director General of CERN stated at the end of the seminar, we have discovered a new particle that is consistent with the Higgs boson, but which one? The results confirmed Peter Higgs' idea and heralded the start of the next chapter to study in detail the properties of this new particle. All this effort due to the idea of Peter Higgs in 1964. His theory is beautiful, experiment agrees, Feynman would be impressed. A century on from Rutherford, we all sense that a new revolution in physics and astronomy is very close. The Higgs boson will now be studied in great detail, but we know that there is dark matter and dark energy, 
but these are not well understood. That's why they're called dark, which means there's still 96% of the universe to explain. So there's still plenty of work for all of you out there. Physicists are taught to investigate the world in a particular way. Uh, you have learnt fundamental principles, the laws of thermodynamics, Maxwell's equations, quantum mechanics, together with the key underlying skills such as mathematics and the ability to write a decent report in good English, at least I hope so. You are not afraid to tackle any problem because you know that you can solve anything by taking and using these ideas and skills from your intellectual toolbox. This makes physics-trained students very adaptable and employable. Some of you will go on to do physics and astronomy research. Some will work in finance, perhaps banks. Some in schools, some in high-tech industry. Wherever you go, you will find the skills you have learnt here invaluable. Moreover, please do not lose the key requirement for any scientist, curiosity. It is this that brought you here, and it is this that will make for an exciting and rewarding future. Good luck, and you're always welcome back. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Kuteh Abbas Asaf al Mukta Tafki. <laughs> Gary Derek Braun. Timothy Daniel Butters. <laughs> Matthew Alexander Fraser. <laughs> Andrew Gary Rue. <laughs> Tom Hassel. Jonathan Higgum. <laughs> Quince Lee. <laughs> Hu Liu. <laughs> Alex Christopher Martinuk. Mark Proctor. <laughs> it's some Riaz. <laughs> Anthony Scarf. <laughs> Chesri Tadu Wush Schnuzka. Samuel Tia <laughs> Mika Vesta Rinnan <laughs> Jennifer Louise Willen Williams <laughs> Neil James Young Ching Chao Jan <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science by Research, Astronomy and Astrophysics, Nicole Cunningham. <laughs> Georgina Heron. <laughs> Jennifer Rachel White. And for the degree of Master of Science, Nuclear Science and Technology, 
Terry Hewitson. James MacDonald. Obina Benedict Nawusu. Benjamin Rogers. And for the degree of Master of Physics, Physics with Philosophy with Honours, Anne Margaret Callow. Samuel Curtis. Toby William Soule. Jonathan James Wilkinson. And in Physics with Honours, Daniel Balfour. <laughs> Thomas Philip Barker. <laughs> Nicholas Peter Barker. <laughs> John Edward Nicholas Bone. Dan Brewer. <laughs> Philip Clements. <laughs> William Edward Clifford Brown. <laughs> Neil James Cook. Jesse Cusack. <laughs> Peter David Cuttle. <laughs> Hugh Dawson. <laughs> Thomas Graham Foland. Lawrence Vincent Fasadney. Andrew Frederick Green. Christopher Richard Gubbin. Philip George Hamnet. Endu Han, who was also awarded the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award. Well done. <laughs> Samuel Haste. <laughs> Joe Thornhill Salvador Heffer. Morgan Timothy Hibbert. Andrew Houghton. Stephen Jackson. Liam Barry Jack. Gareth Michael Jones. <laughs> Daniel James Kelly. <laughs> Charlotte Perrison. <laughs> Madeline Amy Lees. Thomas Lee.
Xin Kuao Li. Xiao Chen Ma. Oliver McLaughlin. Catherine Mills. Andrew Christopher Moss. Casper Nonclerk. Florence Ifoma, Naniko Okoye. George Genghis O'Neill. Adam J. Payne. Sanesh Patel. Ian Poxon. Oliver Charles Putt. Yang Chin. Michaela Creech Maitland. Alexander Rabinovich. Samuel Peter Ridgway. Christopher Paul Ripley. <laughs> Dee Fo Shou. <laughs> Bethany Spencer. <laughs> Jacob Mendelstein. Stephanie Jane Stewart. <laughs> Joshua Edward Logan Taylor. <laughs> Jack Setter Taylor. <laughs> Ashley Michael Timmons. Andrew David Timms. <laughs> Matthew Philip Tooley. <laughs> Michael Peter Valance. <laughs> Daniel Welsh. Annabelle Christina M. Williams. Mark Joseph Williams. Colin Robert Woods. And in Physics with Astrophysics with Honours, Ryan David Brothwell. Samuel Cusworth. Carl Johan Olive Mahasta. Hazel Rian Martindale. Maximilian Johannes 
Ormek. <laughs> Joe Porshaw. <laughs> Simon Seri Rook Yard. Shujata Shit Haran. And in physics with business and management with honours, James William Beaumont. Michael Joseph Murphy. And in physics, we're studying Europe with honours, David Robert Allen. <laughs> and in physics with theoretical physics with honours, Daniel John Banks. <laughs> Daniel Burns. Lloyd William Cawthorn. <laughs> Russell Charles Dawson. <laughs> Shah Bodin Sari. <laughs> Lee Robert Whitaker. And for the degree of Master of Mathematics and Physics with honours, Joseph Anderson. <laughs> Peter Ashcroft. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Bickle. Joel Thomas Bradshaw. <laughs> Charlotte Elizabeth Buchanan. <laughs> Heather Jane Davis. <laughs> David Kresky Edmonds. Siobhan Fanning. <laughs> Edward Hinchcliffe. <laughs> Paris Lees. <laughs> Scott McMorris. Paula Mearns. <laughs> Joe Martin Richardson. <laughs> Natalie Thirlby. <laughs> Rachel Trainier. Alexander Xiang. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Mathematics and Physics with honours, Jonathan Carr. <laughs> Aaron Peters. Dan Stavely. <laughs> Emily Watson. <laughs> Adam Wilson. <laughs> Ian
Daniel Wright. And in physics with honours, Melanie Abraham. <laughs> Elliot Andrew Barker. <laughs> James Barlow. <laughs> Anna Catherine Busby. Thomas Mark Campbell. <laughs> Thomas Carabine. <laughs> Yu Suk Chu. <laughs> Reese Cotton. Oh, sorry. Matthew Cordingly. I'm oh, sorry. Matthew Cordingly. <laughs> Reese Cotton. <laughs> Sinead Theresa Doherty. <laughs> Richard Edward Fenton. Laura Gocha. Adam Greenup. Christopher Grice. William Marcus Harrop. Sophie Jane Hetherington. <laughs> Lucas Holt. <laughs> Gavin Hopkins. <laughs> James Michael Keatings. Joe Kelly. <laughs> James Andrew Laybourne. <laughs> Elliot Lynch. <laughs> Kieran Emmett McHugh. Patrick Moore. <laughs> Karina Mehta. <laughs> Lydia Nadine Aldershaw. <laughs> Jeremy Peter Owen. Chuk Fung Pang. <laughs> Jonathan James Perry. <laughs> Hannah Louise Renshaw. <laughs> Jennifer Sheehan. Adam Skeet. <laughs> Caitlin Stansfield. <laughs> Danny Thomas. <laughs> Rebecca Voss.
Papa Fit Unasuk. Elizabeth Waterhouse. Nicholas Mark Webster. Yao Lu Fun Wong. And in physics with astrophysics with honors, Sebastian Daniels. <laughs> Timothy Johnson. <laughs> Harry Moore. <laughs> Mary Anneli Pentakanen. And in physics with philosophy with honors, Jemima Hannah Elizabeth Knight. <laughs> Sebastian Krzyzewski. <laughs> Christina Lumsdien Den. Rebecca Welsh. <laughs> Lauren Emma Yeomans. <laughs> and in physics with theoretical physics with honours, no. <laughs> And is it physics? No. <laughs> Sorry, changed at the last minute. That one, Matthew Grint. I'm sorry, Matthew. You're special. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Modern History with Economics, with honours, Matthew Grint. And in criminology with honours, Alana Sandham. <laughs> it's not quite over. So at today's ceremony, we're also making another special award. The Students' Union and the University worked in partnership to offer students the opportunity to nominate their inspirational teachers and outstanding support staff for a Manchester Teaching Award. The winners of these awards really make a positive difference to the lives of Manchester University students, and for these hardworking members of staff, this award provides recognition for the exceptional work that they do. So on behalf of the University of Manchester and the University of Manchester Students' Unions, I would like to present a 2012 Manchester Teaching Award to a member of staff that all the students will know well, Martin Corum. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the University of Manchester, again, I extend my warmest uh, regards and best wishes for all of our graduates. May your careers and life ahead of you take and, and take account of everything that you want them to. Congratulations on all your success and well done. I now declare this ceremony closed.